So 2022 was an interesting time to be in the multifamily industry. Started off the year super, super hot, rates were really low, but obviously as the year progressed and the rates started spiking up, the industry really kind of came to a halt, right? I mean, there was really not a lot of transactions getting done, especially as we kind of hit that summer, late summer, fall and early winter period. A lot of brokerages were, uh, you know, were obviously struggling because transactional volume was just weighed down. But now that we're in 2023, I think there's actually gonna be quite a big multifamily opportunity. A lot of the components of the market, I think have kind of restabilized. I think, you know, buyers and sellers are starting to get closer uh, to understanding where each other are. So I think there's gonna be quite a bit going on. So what I thought I would do in this video is talk about the key components you need to think about if you wanna take advantage of the multifamily opportunity in 2023. We'll talk everything from financing, execution, underwriting, and the type of assets and locations you should be looking at. So with that, let's get at it. What's going on guys? My name is Lior and welcome back to my channel. Now, before I get into the meat and potatoes of the video, two super quick things guys. Number one, if this is your first time on my channel, First of all, welcome. Second of all, make sure you smash that subscribe button for me. I put out a ton of new videos every single week talking all different facets of multifamily investing. And number two guys, if you guys are looking to invest in high grade commercial multifamily, large apartment complexes in some of the best markets across the country, if you're not looking to do the work yourself, but you wanna invest passively and get that exposure, me and my team are here. We buy large complexes across the country and are always you know, happy to work with more passive investors. So if that's something you're looking for, make sure you click the link below in the description and schedule a call with me and my team, and we can see if this is a good fit for you. So with that, now let's get into the meat and potatoes of the video. And as I said, right, I mean, 2022 was just a funky, funky year with a lot of different uh, things going on. Course driven by interest rates spiking up, inflation spiking up. Now we are in 2023. And as I said, I think there's going to be a massive, massive multifamily opportunity. As we talked about, transactional volume in 2022 was way, way down. But finally, I'm even starting to see it in my markets that we're attacking. Finally, sellers are kind of restabilizing, setting up new expectations of where they need to be at in order to get deals done. And we're slowly starting to see an uptick in deals and volume of multifamily getting done. So as I said with that, let's talk about the four things that I think you absolutely need to think about if you wanna kind of partake in the multifamily opportunity that I've seen in 2023. You know, we'll talk about four key factors. And Factor number one, let's start with, is the quality of the location and asset. And in terms of location choosing, I think one of the trends that's gonna define 2023, and I think where you're gonna find the most success, is investing in the most stable, most rigorous, and kind of most sturdy markets in the US, right? And the reason for that is, you know, we still may have some volatility ahead of us over the next six, 12, even 18 months. Right. Obviously, we just had some a uh, couple of banking crises happen with SVB. First Republic was in, uh, in jeopardy. So there's potential for some more turmoil to come. So as an investor, I don't know if I necessarily would be chasing those super uh, growth, more volatile kinds of markets. Right. I think you need to go after the more stable stuff that is less likely to be impacted by any sort of additional economic volatility or uncertainty. And I was reading actually a report about this a report about international investors and they kind of ranked the most interest, the top five markets that they thought international investors would go after. And again, you got to think international investors typically high, high net worth, looking for just stable returns and not looking to lose capital. And you know, some of the, the top four markets that they pointed out in that report that was going to be most interest was going to be New York, Boston, DC and Atlanta, right? So you were talking about some of the most stable multifamily markets, you know, that, pos that, that exist in the US, right? All of these markets have strong, strong fundamentals, strong, strong foundations. And honestly, those are the kinds of markets I would be chasing product in, right? Because you kind of minimize your downside, you, you, you take away some of that possible volatility while still opening yourself up for all the upside that I think will happen in 2023. And same thing with a quality of the asset too, 
right? I would look at just high quality product today, right? I wouldn't go chasing, you know, dumpier stuff or stuff that just, you know, doesn't feel right. I think high quality locations, high quality assets, they're, e they're gonna have less friction in getting them rented out. You're gonna be more easily get top dollar rents. Again, just minimizing that downside, minimizing vacancy, um, any sorts of low rents, right? Or any sort of collections issue, you know, as we potentially go over the next six, 12, 18 months and potentially have additional volatility coming through. Now, the second uh, metric I wanted to talk about was financing. And here's what you have to know about financing if you wanna set yourself up for success, right? Obviously rates are up, right? But besides the rates, uh, a lot of lenders, particularly in the markets I play in, I've noticed their LTVs have gone down. Now, if you can find core apartment product that is really quality apartments in quality locations, you know, you can still get actually pretty decent leverage. I mean, I've seen lenders quote out 65, 70%. Obviously, if you go down the agency side, it'll be a little bit different, but you can still get, uh, you know, the point is you can still get pretty solid leverage. Now, if you're gonna go look at, you know, again, other stuff, maybe mixed use or non-apartments or anything that might not necessarily, a lender might consider a great building or in a great location, I've seen that leverage drop very, very quickly. Um, you know, I've heard of investors talk about uh, lever uh, leverage in the 50s percent range, right? Which is just obviously not amazing. So really be being selective about number one, right? The location, the asset is gonna have a big impact on number two, which is your financing. The other thing to be aware of too is, especially if you're someone doing a lot of value add projects like we are, um, we do quite a bit of value add. You know, one thing I have noticed is that lenders are getting really tight about construction financing, right? There are, they are, there's less appetite for them to go down the construction world. You know, lighter stuff is probably still fine and they're still doing that, but I pitched some heavier stuff, um, you know, some heavier value add projects and they are definitely getting a little bit worried about that. So just keep that in mind as you're kind of structuring your debt and your equity, you might get some pushback, um, especially if you're looking at some heavier lifts uh, in, uh, you know, for your strategy. Number three metric that you should focus on is underwriting. Now, with your underwriting, there's a couple of things. So first of all, in terms of rent, um, I think it's still very, very important to be really conservative on your rent. Obviously, a lot of markets have experienced huge, huge growth over the last six, 12, 18, 24 months in their rents, but you need to stay grounded, right? I, I wouldn't necessarily go super aggressive that you're gonna continue to have an insane rent growth. I don't think that's a good strategy to rely on. So I do think you need to be very, very conservative with your rents, look at exactly rented comps, and don't put in massive growth assumptions. Other things we're looking at is exit cap rates, right? So we're fluffing our exit cap rates because again, there's a chance that they can continue to decompress um, as volatility ensues over the next 12, 18, 24 months, and depending, and obviously depending what happens with interest rates. So on the exit cap rates, on, on non-course locations, I'm definitely trying to put in a fair amount of safety margin to see you know, what kind of values we could be looking at in the future. I think I'm a little bit more comfortable with core stuff, you know, in core city locations. Um, you know, I invest in a lot in like Boston. Um, you know, I'm probably not as worried, right? Uh, you know, I'm obviously still adding a little bit of margin to my exit cap rates, but I'm not as concerned. So I think it really depends, this really depends on your market. If you're more in kind of class A locations, you're probably okay giving a little bit less margin, but you know, as you go more out and out of that, I do think you need to have healthy, uh, healthy margins with your exit caps to make sure you're protecting your downside. And finally, the last thing I'll say about underwriting too, and more from the LP side, right? So if you're someone that's raising LP equity for your deals, one thing I have noticed too, and you might've noticed the same, I think now more than ever, LPs have become very, very focused on cash on cash returns, right? Which, you know, there's always been a fair amount of focus on cash on cash, because obviously you want, everyone wants yield on their, on their investment. But I think more than ever, I've noticed that recently. Um, you know, my personal opinion is I think you know, if people are gonna deploy capital um, today, they really wanna see some sort of more immediate return on it, um, as opposed to kind of like the longer term pitch. So just keep that in mind if you're raising equity, that's just one thing um, that I've noticed in my own dealings and transactions. And finally, point number four, um, you know, that I wanna talk about that I think is gonna be critical for you. Um, it's gonna sound simple, but it's so, so important, and that is execution, right? At the end of the day, you can find the right deals. We all know this. you can find the right deals, you can have the right leverage, you can have the right debt, right kind of equity, 
but at the end of the day, the money is made in the execution, right? So making sure you're really tightening up your execution. We've spent a lot of time in, uh, you know, on my, on my side, um, trying to kind of work up the operational logistics, uh, you know, between leasing, construction management, property management, internal ops, marketing. I think it's going to be absolutely key right now to hammer that down. So, you know, if you're an investor and you're looking to scale up, working on your internal ops, making sure you have the solid team around you, I think is going to be absolutely huge. So those are my two cents, guys, on the four things you really need to think about. As I said, I think we're going to have huge, huge opportunity. But in order to capitalize on that, I do think you need to have those four uh, metrics and criteria, criteria really down um, in order to be successful um, in 2023. So hopefully that's helpful, guys. Of course, if you have any sorts of questions, make sure you put them in the comments below and I will definitely, definitely help you 